Greetings, I'm Don the Crown, and today let's talk about Last Epoch. This is a new ARPG that is currently in beta, but is showing a lot of potential. You can gain access for $35 from their website, Steam, or my Nexus GG store, hashtag not sponsored. Right now, the developers are looking to have a full launch by the end of 2021, with five classes, with a total of 15 subclasses, each with unique skills that have their own unique skill trees. Yes, that's right. Each skill has its own skill tree, which can drastically change how you play the skill. From options of changing damage, damage types to even making the skill perform differently, there's definitely potential to create some unique and funky builds. If you're worried though that this is the type of game where you're going to have to spend more time watching guides and reading a wiki than actually playing, then let me reassure you that this game is a lot more accessible than its peers. With a built-in game guide that explains most game mechanics, you can quickly look up any term you're not familiar with, and while each skill tree might take a minute for you to read through to see your options, it's relatively easy to start playing a skill. You can even put a skill on your bar that you don't specialize in just to try them out for a little bit. Heck, each build I've done so far has consisted of me leveling up a class, trying out different skills as I go, and then finding one I enjoyed and building around it. One thing I'm really loving so far is how combat feels in Last Epoch. A lot of enemy attacks are shown in advance with color, damage type coordinated telegraphs that you can avoid. Since generally the screen is not covered with a million skill effects at once, you can actually see these telegraphs and avoid them most of the time. This is the type of system I haven't seen since Wildstar, and man do I love it. I was able to go into some epic boss fights and pick up the mechanics I need to dodge, not because I watched some snazzy YouTube video beforehand, but because the game itself shows you how to do the fight. So no off-screen die beams in this game. Also, combat is paced well enough that you actually have time to read what mods a rare monster has, and sometimes it makes you want to fight them differently. Another great thing about combat is that when you die, you're given a heads up as to what struck the killing blow. Although this isn't necessarily perfect, it has alerted me from time to time that my resists were too low, or that certain attacks really needed to be dodged. Right now, Endgame consists of two different game modes, the Monolith of Fate and Arenas, with more coming down the line. Monoliths are similar to Path of Exile maps, however they require much less maintenance. You just select the timeline that you want to run, and then pick the modifiers you want to add to your next echo. Each one will have a relatively simple objective, such as kill a mini-boss or destroy a few targets. As you clear consecutive echoes, the modifiers will last for more echoes, causing you to have a more difficult and rewarding time. Eventually, you'll unlock the ability to run a story echo, which progresses the timeline. The third story echo is an epic boss fight, and yes, the echo mods will be active during the fight. These boss fights drop specific uniques and game-wide blessings for your character that either empower it or increase the odds of dropping certain types of items. Loot in this game is somewhat different from other ARPGs. For the most part, you'll be using non-unique gear that you find and improve yourself. Each rare item can have two prefixes and two suffixes, and it is relatively easy to improve or craft items from scratch. While playing, you'll find affix shards as drops, which can be used to add or improve items with those particular affixes. So if you want to add more void resistance to your gear, you'll simply need to find void resistance affix shards. But it's even easier than that. You can also use a rune of shattering on items to destroy them and recover some affix shards of the types that are on the item. So even mediocre gear can be used as scrap material for your other projects. One of the best things about Aphex Shards is picking up one will vacuum all of them in the nearby area at once, so no more breaking your left click due to clicking loot. Similar to Path of Exile, Last Epoch also has a loot filter, except you can easily edit and update it without leaving the game. This lets you hide unnecessary loot and even highlight loot differently for different mods. Since everything drops identified, you're able to filter for specific mods you want to see. So no more picking up a bunch of junk and then throwing it at the vendor. This system is rather easy to start using, and while it doesn't have the ability to play custom sounds or change loot size, yet, I'm sure that this feature will only get better with time. Once you're ready to craft, you simply need to put the item in the forge, which is openable everywhere, and select the affix that you want to add or improve. You can improve affixes if you have the corresponding shard, or can add new affixes if there is room. The game will tell you the chance of success, and if there is any failure chance, what the odds of each type of failure are. As you continue to craft, the instability of the item will rise, which makes failure all the more likely. Right now Last Epoch has three tiers of crafting failure. 
minor fracture, damaging fracture, and destructive fracture. All forms of fracture will lock your item from crafting, although it can still be worn, you just can't improve it anymore. Damaging fractures will not only lock the item, but will reduce one of the affix levels from 1 to 2 levels, while destructive fractures will reduce two of the affixes by 1 to 2 levels. So you really want to ride the line of risk when working on items. Hitting a minor fracture is not really a big deal, but a destructive fracture can take an item from great to scrap. Adding onto this system are exalted items. Exalted items are fancy purple drop items that always have at least one mod that is tier 6 or 7. This is the only way to acquire these tiers because you can only craft affixes up to tier 5. Endgame chase gear will likely involve getting the right exalted mods on the right base types, but since they are somewhat rare, you'll likely want to avoid overcrafting with them to preserve the most important roles. Besides the rune of shattering, there are currently four other modifier runes that can be found to alter your gear, from removing a random affix to re-rolling the values of all of the affixes on an item. There are also two glyphs which you can use in conjunction with any craft which will reduce the failure chance or reduce the instability added via crafting. This in-depth deterministic crafting is really fun and straightforward. You can quickly identify if a dropped item is something that you want to craft up or just shatter for some affix shards. Since you can see the chance of failure, you can decide when you want to push your luck or when it's best to hit the brakes on crafting. The one thing I'm not a huge fan of is that some item bases have rather large ranges on their implicit values and rerolling these also adds instability, which kind of forces you into using some really solid bases most of the time. Overall, Last Epoch is looking to be a great game that has a variety of different ways to play. While it might not have some of the endgame depth of Path of Exile, it does a great job presenting a wide variety of different builds. The combat feels good, and like you're actually engaging in combat instead of blitzing through a minimap. Crafting is a lot of fun and feels really easy to get into as a new player. I'm looking forward to seeing what this game has coming down the pike. If you haven't checked it out yet, I would definitely recommend it. Thank you very much.